man, it's basically Cheltenham. So uh, obviously I'm getting a bit excited. Jason, you excited for Cheltenham? <laughs> nah, not interested. Um, probably similar to how some of you are with some of the stuff that I warble on about, but Betloader has another update. Um, getting to the time of year now where people will be looking at the stakes that they've got. Um, we may have some injury news that's come out recently. There'll be more horses dropping out for the festival, not running in the races that we might have backed them for. But this addition to the bet loader, if you do use it, will hopefully provide some level of comfort. So the point of doing it is by backing in advance, in theory, we're getting some value by backing at bigger prices than they are now. A lot of the prices to do with Cheltenham as well are running the risk of getting this far down the line that they might not make the festival. So well done if you've got decent books looking in there. I'm going to share my screen now with my bet loader so you can get a feel for where I'm at with it. Warts and all in it, betting. Um, just happy to share, to be honest. Um, yeah, let's go in with it. So here we are looking at both a bit of the bet loader and odds checker, trusty odd odds checker. Now, um, I've got the... My quick stats showing up on here. Other people that have used the bet loader, there's videos explaining it in detail. If anyone wants it, you can send an email to uh, facebookcheltmental at gmail.com and I can send it out. There has been some Windows updates that affect active X controls or OCX files to be more explicit. Um, I know I need to make some changes to the way some of this functionality works. So some of you may be getting issues with it. Uh, I might get a chance to fix the workaround with them. I don't think it should take more than a day to do, but I might not. Anywho, if you get problems and stuff, people can message me. It's all fine. Um, it creates a table on the side. I won't go into too much detail. There's lots of different buttons and things that it does, but if you want it, you can have that. And then if you want this new update, then just let me let me know. Just drop an email in there and I can send it out, and then you'll just have to port the data over, but I can maybe write something to do that. Anywho, that's not the point of the video, is it? The point of the video is for me to show you how this new function works and to give you a view of the point of it really. So I touched on it in a previous video that I like to try and get my singles as high as I possibly can in terms of percentage of my money. 75% um, ish is okay for me now. Obviously the closer we get to the festival, um, sometimes you might feel the best thing to do is start doubling up a couple of horses or putting trebles and things on. I like to keep the majority of my stakes as singles, um, playing about with the percentages just to see how things pan out. You see here a list of the top paying horses. Um, these are lists for the singles. They go down quite a long way. Um, and then there's a few different tools that we can use in here to potentially work out our value. There is something listed in here, which race by race, which will be a similar view to what we'll see in a moment, will tell us the horses we've selected. It will show us how much we've staked, how much we've lost. And then by putting in their current odds, we can see their relative chance of winning a race. So we can come back to that. But in here, where you can type in and add... Uh, update the odds that feeds through to this other part which we'll see in a second there's other bits in here where you can see staked values on horses so you can see how much cover you've got on certain horses etc but this isn't the point of the video so bang without further ado this is the new part that's in there there's a header at the top that's telling us how much you staked to date what your required stakes now are so if everything was exactly the same price as it was before and you've obviously had losing bets in there, this is why the total stakes and the amount has gone down, it would cost you this much to stake. So basically, I'm bang on a £1,000 down at the moment from what I've staked anti-post. So in theory, looking at this, if the prices were the same, it was pointless me back in advance. I should have waited to now, and I could have saved myself a £1,000. You will notice that that number in there is the same as these headline figures, because is what it is. And that's because the prices that are being used to determine this are the prices that have been staked. So they're in the data table that's on the left. Um, but when we start updating the odds in here, it's going to work out the calculation based on the odds today, how much it would cost. So if you back something at 10 to 1 to win £100 or 9 to 1 to win £100, it might cost you a tenner. Now, if it's an even money, it's probably going to cost you 50 quid. That means you're £40 better off in theorem. Just a position before. Obviously, it's not all rock solid, is it? But... Again, it provides some comfort when we start seeing these amounts of money going down with non-runners, all those sorts of things. Lots of people with the thought of that don't like anti-post punting, which I get, but you know, we're looking to actually mitigate our risk. We're actually looking to put ourselves in a position where we're potentially more risk adverse uh, or averse by pe betting in advance because we're getting the extra cover. Um, a lot of people don't like backing multiple horses in race. A lot of people think you should just be picking an opinion when you get to the festival. 
there's lots of different ways of doing it, but again, that's not the point of the video. So there are quite a few different horses that I've backed in here. Every horse that's been backed, whether it's single or it's contained in a multiple, is listed in here. We have the races that they're for. So if you've got a horse, for example, I've got Blue Lord backed in the Supreme and Ballymore, both non one no bet for me, but they're in here. He will be listed twice in the Ballymore and in the Supreme, so it can calculate the specific odds for the horse in that race. What, of course, this doesn't take into consideration, you'll have to put that in yourself, is if you have backed a horse non one no bet, it may be a shorter prize, and you took that because of the concession of non one no bet. When you're typing the best odds available in here, you may want to tweak that. So if you know you've backed a horse non one no bet, you may want to put the best non one no bet prize at the moment. But this is for updating it now. When it comes to the actual festival, the fact will remain that regardless of whether you've backed it non one no bet, if it gets to the festival and it runs in that race and it's a bigger price than you backed it at, you should have waited till the day. And I know we could say, oh, well, yeah, but I didn't have to worry about it. Yeah, but you should have waited till the day. So that's where this will come into its own. When we get to really the Monday before Cheltenham, you'll be able to type in all the current odds of all these selections and it will show you how much better off you were in the first place. But like I say, it's nice to do it for now. It's nothing more than really than a bit of a, maybe an ego boost or a reality check to see where we are with things. So I've already warbled. I try to keep this down as much as I can. But I'm going to go through and add odds in now, what they currently are. We'll skim through some of the races, probably in card order on um, Odds Checker. Um, what I'll probably do is I'll update each race. You'll see the changes happening, and I'll probably fast forward this video just to try and keep it a bit more condensed. Because what I am going to do is I'm going to update every single price that's in here. So again, it's warts and all the stuff that I'm showing you. I've staked best part of four and a half grand now. Currently, I've lost a thousand pounds on those anti post bets from dead. Um, runners, dead bets that aren't going to go to the festival, but I'm going to update this now to show you what position I'm in. So again, warts and all, all honesty. Um, and then, yeah, I'll just, I'll speed up bits where I need to speed them up. So I'm going to start running through them, adding the selections in. I will do it in, I guess I, I guess I could do it in alphabetical order. I could do it in race order. I'll probably just do it in race order and slide up and down just because it's the way that it is on here. And then again, with prices that are listed on this front screen, you'll know when you go into odds checker that they may be slightly a little bit different, but I'm just going to put in the prices as they are here or as I know off the top of my head. And then we'll come back after each one that I've done it. But you'll notice as I update each of these, the prices will change. So just for example, we'll just get the Supreme off to the start. Type in appreciate it. So it comes up with a pop-up for... The, the horse and the race that you're in, just to remind you, you'll type in the new price and you'll see there that I'm £52 better off just because of the price that Appreciate has gone into now. That basically means I'm £52 better off. If I had to back him now, it would cost me a bit more to do it. So I'm going to update all the ones for the Supreme um, and then we can have a, a quick look at that and then I'll just fast forward. I'll go for each of them and then I'll edit and change this as it comes after. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, so that's the Supreme that's been updated. I mean, for pleasure and irritable, I haven't double-checked the prices, but I know they're both relatively big, um, and they'll both be bigger than what I've staked them at, so for the purpose of now, doing myself in a little bit. But the other thing with the prices is we're taking bookmaker prices here because that's what we've bet anti-post with. Now, the exchange is available for betting anti-post. There's not as much liquidity in there. When it comes to Cheltenham, you may potentially want to be harsh on yourself and say, look, I'm going to show you the prices that are available on the exchanges because they will potentially be the biggest price that's available. But for the purpose of this now, I'm just putting the odds checker prices in. And once you get past, say, a 50 to 1 poke, if it's 50 to 1 or it's 200 to 1, in terms of the amount staked, it's not a huge difference. So to win £100, for example, if you've got it at 50 to 1, it's going to cost you 2 quid. If it goes out to 200 to 1, it's going to cost you 50p. It's a £1.50 difference in there. And when we're talking about thousands of pounds that have been staked, pound 50 ain't gonna matter so anywho this is the supreme that's been done you'll see we've dropped right down we were a thousand pounds negative because of what's happened with horses not running and because of the scattergun approach that's been applied in the supreme with multiple singles things like that i'm a bit, bit, bit better off off the case of staking it now what would be interesting i know everyone will think this is it wouldn't it be nice to be able to see these required stakes per race to see if you've done better or not in each race um i may whittle that down for the sake of it, but I do just think it's reading into stuff a little bit too much. We're looking at the whole picture for the festival. So I'm going to move through, I'm going to go for a few more races, we'll come back. Oh, what I'll do is I'll do the rest of the novice hurdles, I'll do Triumph, Ballymore, Albert Bartlett, we'll come back and see what the numbers look like after that.
Okay, so I've updated the Ballymore selections in there. I have noticed a Rick that I've left in here. The fact that Lacal's article is still in my list of live bets. Um, we can go through now and we can chop that out. Um, you can see that it's gone down from 1,000 down to 265 as a negative figure. So you, we can see that even just going through the novice hurdles, that betting anti-post in my instance here, I've, I've benefited um, so far. We'll skim through and we'll do some more of them. I'm just going to quickly, obviously it's live and on the scene, so we'll just quickly take out Lakeo's article. On the bet loader, when you have these selections, you can choose remove completely, you can choose remove non-runner no bet. So we'll see the figures that we'll update in here. If you remove non-runner no bet and it's in a multiple, it will reduce it down. It's smart enough to work those things out. Um, just a little warning messages there anyway. But you'll see he was non-runner no bet. So see you later, Lakeo's, doesn't matter. Then we'll open this back up, and as I say, we've already typed those prices in, so it's not as if we've got to start again and go back and do it. And once you've updated those current prices, it will do it, and you'll see that the cow's article's now gone from here. So it was still the £1,000 difference to start with, again, because I've backed him on no bets. It doesn't really matter. But again, we're getting a feel here for the fact that by backing anti-post and getting those bits of value, we we're potentially making ourselves feel better. Like I say, looking at your bet slips and just seeing these horses being withdrawn can make you feel quite shit really there's no other way to say it um and i know different people will stake different numbers of horses different amounts of money um lots of people might do risk-free betting by betting on uh, on free bets but again i just think this is a nice way of looking at things and warts and all really with this stuff isn't it because we could bet anti-post and we could get it wrong all the time i obviously make plenty of mistakes in there but again the scattering and doing it across a few thousand pounds worth of bets if you've got 200 pounds worth of dodgy ones in there that are just on a wing and a prayer if they do go to, to the wrong side, then it's fine. But other people, that that might be their whole entire bet balance, so I'm referring more to anti-up than anything at the moment. That's really bad, isn't it? If I've, if you've been following my selections on there, then you'd be in a terrible position, anti-post, just following those ones off of there. So, fingers crossed you didn't, basically. Or at least, fingers crossed you've got other stuff in there, or fingers crossed um, you don't mind that I've cost you a few pence on there. That's why the anti-up thing was not reluctant to do it but the reason I hadn't done it up until now is the fact that I do bet so many times and I bet very time sensitive so if I hear some news I want to get stuck into something um anyway that's not the point of the video again is it I'm starting to wobble so what we'll do is we'll update the novice chases because obviously they're big races with your shishkins your envoys um and your monkfish and then we'll come back and then I'll talk a little bit more to you so here we go <laughs> So that is updated for the novice chases now. So you'll see we've already reached a point now where just through novice hurdles and novice chases where if I was to wait and stake to get the same returns nowadays, it would cost me £551 more. So it's a difference of, it cost me 12% more basically to put myself in the same potential position for winnings off these same horses. Now you'll see there Marsh Envoy is the only one that I've got in there. And as much as I've crabbed him in little bits, I don't, know if, I don't think I've been crabbing him like it's a dig. I'm just saying that what I thought. Um, he's the winner of the marsh, isn't he? It's been lucky this year. I say lucky. Of the three novice chases, the three favourites, Anthony Post, have all made their way up there. Um, I, sh I pot potentially rue the decision that I had. All three of them in a treble, which I cashed over the summer for some reason. I think I needed some cash to back a dog. Um, and... I had some monkfish singles as well, and I just sort of left them a little bit. I've still got them in at okay, like nice prices, and I've still got a good amount of cover on the horses, but you know, it's hindsight in it. We all wish we could have got in deeper. And then when you do get in really deep to something, if it goes and gets withdrawn or it doesn't perform so well, you, you're obviously kicking yourself. So this is why the bet loader is really handy, just to keep that track on how much you are um, in on horses and whether you need to top them up or not. Again, something for another day. So what I reckon's worth doing now is there's lots of other selections that are in here now the any race markets like Shantry House I've backed I think 25 is any race he's a lot shorter now I think he's 8 to 1 for um, even just the is it stable plate you might be going for but there's a few in here that have shortened up nicely for any race I'm just going to leave the any race ones because I don't can't be bothered to basically go on to William Hill and find out or, or Skybet and check between them but you can update those and it will calculate for them everything else I'm about to update now so we'll see like I say almost warts and all of everything that it is the any race ones I will be ahead on those. They're shorter. Angola's the same, I think, but the other ones I think are shorter on the any races. Um, if I know what race they've gone for, I've changed it in the bet load of, even though I've backed them any race, like Happy Go Lucky in the Ultima and Next Destination that's going to be RSA bound. But like I say, I'll update the rest of them. We'll see what the numbers are and then I'll just sign off this video and stop wasting any more of your time. <laughs> So 
So that's everything updated that I can be bothered to do right now. There's a few handicappers in there as well. Prices have changed significantly on some of those. Some aren't going to run. Um, I've taken out a couple of horses that aren't going to turn up at the festival or bets that were already dead, like a led of on that I backed for the National Hunt Chase. Didn't notice that he'd been scratched, but hey ho, that was a tenner down. And then took out a couple of other ones that I've backed, non runner, no bet. Um, put the kettle on, it's not going to go mayor's chase, we don't think. So I've just chopped it out for the purpose of this. But we're updated now, um, as far as I'm concerned. So the total stakes versus live is there, 4,400. And then the total stake live, just over a grand under. You can see now that the percentage difference and the actual monetary difference, and again, this is without including the handicaps, and this is without including the any race markets that are in there. Um, with £1,400 in a better position, it would cost us £1,400 more, which is 32%, which I... This isn't to... I'm not, none of this is egotistical to put this out here. I'd put this out there even if I was negative. That's why we do it with the anti-up stuff. But I've, I've, I've been betting anti-post for a long time now in this particular style that I feel fairly confident within it. Obviously, we need some luck, injuries, and all those sorts of things can happen at any point. But I've had bad years where honestly I've lost more than half my stake of anti-post betting and I've still been in a better position than if I'd have waited until that moment in time to put the bets on. Now there are going to be some horses that don't run, there are going to be a few more losing bets that are in here, but I'm not having £1,400 worth gone, let's be, let's be honest about it. And you'll see with things like Benny DeGee with the Mayor's Chase, now I have got some cover in other ones, um, when the news started to come out about injuries and things like that, when cash-outs were suspended it's a bit snaky isn't it of them to do it but you do have the options there to think if I can't cash out with one bookmaker I can take advantage with others and back the horses that are going to shorten um, and I, I don't do it myself but I have consci consciously thought before in the past that say for example Benny did you I couldn't get out 50 quid of the stake some of the other ones I cash for a bit of profit but it basically cost me 50 quid with Benny did you anti-post I could have probably backed some of the other mares in that race at bigger prices before Benny was withdrawn and the fact that they would have shortened, same as the mayor's hurdle, I probably could have easily got £100 worth of extra cash out back. That's without using the exchanges, that's using bookmakers. So we know that if you... They, 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 some of them can be a little bit tighter than others, but say, for, for example, Paddy Power, man, they were 14 to 1 Dame de Compagnie for the mayor's hurdle, non one or no bet, so you could get bigger with other bookies, but that's the price they were. Um, and you've been given now 20%, but well, it's actually more than that, 25% on top of what you've staked as your cash out now. So in theory, I could have just had £200 on her and it's non-run or no bet anyway. So if she doesn't go there, she doesn't go there. Benny gets withdrawn. Now I know there's risks. She could run and be pants. But when Benny's withdrawn, we knew the price was going to go down. In those instances, you could claw some of your money back. So there's snaky little ways to do things. You're risking accounts doing that, but hey-ho. So again, I like to say I'm not going to warble when I've gone through this in some depth, I think. Um, it's just handy that I think to, to know in your head where you are at. It's also good to know before you go into a festival, what your expectations potentially could be. Now, I touched on another element that's within the bet loader here, which show us, shows us race by race our percentage chance of getting results out of it. Um, and you'll see for different races, the colours will change and things. So for the Supreme, for example, orange just means I'm in and around. Like I'm possibly no better off, no worse off. And it's going to depend on the results that come in here. When we chop out Irisable and we chop out Bob Ollinger, both non one and no bet, that's going to change things. Blue Laws non one and no bet as well. So it's going, to, it's going to change the dynamics within here. You'll see Appreciate it's not listed, but he was on the other list. That's because he's in lots of multiples. But this is looking specifically at a race by race perspective of what we've staked and where we're at. So while it doesn't show the percentage change like the other one does, you get a bit of a view in here anyway. We can see Arkle there. We've got by the the bollocks, haven't we, for Shishkin and Erg, I mean, backing them at slightly bigger prices. Um, I could have got into a Nergamine for some more earlier on, but never mind. That's what it is. And then you can see the percentage chance of the winner of the race coming from those two. It's a two to nine poke that they're going to come in. Um, and my lowest paying return for the total amount staked is a two to five poke. That's if an Ergamine comes in. And I've actually got a almost nine to four poke, haven't we? That if Shishkin comes in off that cover, but we've got a two to nine chance of it actually coming in. So quite nice. And I've got some Anergamine without in there as well. So could be quite good. Um, I haven't put the current odds in for Happy Go Lucky. I think he's 25s, but he's going out almost, so happy days. And then I'm just skimming through. But you get a feel here for different things that happen in certain races. Again, like a Ballymore, I've staked a reasonable amount. Again, Blue Lord, if he comes here, fine. If not, that will drop out some of the stake. Um, but 
it's one to two, basically, the chance of me getting the winner of the Baddiemore on what I've backed. My lowest paying amount, which is Bob Odinger for 25 quid, or it's not 25, 525 back, sorry, works out relatively as a 13 to 8 chance, but I'm obviously getting 13 to 8 on a 1 to 2 poke. And my best payout, which is Optimized Prime, which is pie in the sky stuff, is 13 to 2 poke. But we're looking at, you know, Brave Man's Game 700, Galar de Mezzanil's 5. 37. So we're getting minimum 13 to 8 and we're jumping up there to 700 odd quid. So an extra point-ish, maybe a bit more. Um, so again, potentially in good positions. And then that's it. So this works out for your singles more than anything else. So although the glory on there, there's a good few that have green and there's a lot that are red overall with the multiples and the way that it's been staked I feel like I'm in a fairly solid position the main reason I came to this one is to show you your forecast festival winners when I showed the percentages in our anti-up video and that's showing you the percentage chance when it comes to the festival basically if you've got an even money shot it's got a 50% chance of winning if you back two even money shots think of a coin heads and tails the theory and obviously we know that it could be tails forever but the theory is if you've got two even money pokes and the race was run twice then one would win each is the is the the consensus and it's the only way you can really sort to forecast it um so by working out what percent is chance they've got of winning a race and looking at every single single that we've backed this is showing us what our forecast festival winners are now when you put them in multiple so like i say appreciate it the price that he is seven to four poke he's like a 35 percent chance of actually winning he's not in these calculations for working out forecast festival winners and it's the same with like a monkfish that i've just got in multiples now um, even shackle and Poussoir, i haven't got any singles on him you put those three into the mix we're going to get another winner added into this but this forecast festival winners here is basically saying that on the prices that we've backed it at i could be in a position where i'm going to get 11 winners um from the festival is is the is the vibe potentially it's going to come out from this from the singles and then again although the stakes are scattered across lots of different stuff here if we were to skim down and see the average return from a single being 540 odd if we were to get those 11 winners then of those singles potentially looking at six thousand pounds back off of those so um yeah gives us a good view of what we could potentially be getting back sort of a comfort thing now whether i'm going to get that many winners uh, i don't know this year's been tweaked slightly so where i was saying that we're looking for single returns in that, that field because we've updated this part here to look at um all odds so it can work out in the multiples those forecast festival winners i know i've just said that they wouldn't include appreciated monkfish and shackle Poussoir, but i actually think they will um so potentially some of those singles are going to come in the form of winners in the multiples but it's this is just spitballing now. This is basically just meandering into worlds of wisdom that don't really need to be brought up. So those 11 festival winners, that's what my forecast would be. So as it stands at the moment, I would expect to be getting 11 of the 28 races up um, based on that. Whether that actually happens or not, who knows? Probably might not pan out of that, but I could get away potentially with five or six winners that are the better paying ones, or I might get lucky and get a little bit more. But again, when you're scattergunning it and you're betting across quite a lot of them, you'd expect to have a good chance. And again, I'm a bit graded snobby as the season goes on. Um, so the majority of races that I've covered here are the graded stuff. Obviously, there's 28 races. I'll get stuck into the handicaps, increase my chances in those when the entries come out, and then look at what the revised weights are for some of the Irish runners. But this is just, again, like I say, a view to say it's not all as bad as it seems with anti-post punting when horses are withdrawn. And anyone that sits there thinking, oh, well, look, classic, this is why I don't get involved in anti-post punting. Well, this is the other side of it, isn't it? That you don't get involved in anti-post punting because one horse has been withdrawn. But within here, you'll see the list of the number of different horses that I've backed at Cheltenham. That's not just me. That's not necessarily me going more erratic than anybody else. Lots of people will stake in the same sort of lines, I think. This is why I share this bet loader with as many people as, as want it. It's handy. I've built it. It helps me. And if it helps you guys out, or at least fills that little window between now and Cheltenham to you know, stave off some of that hunger, then happy days. Um, yeah, that's it. So thank you for watching. If anyone stayed this far, very well done to you. Again, just drop an email um, and we'll send out the bet loader to you. Uh, anyone that's got the old version that wants this new bit added in there, then just give me a shout on the email address as well. I'll add it in there. And uh, yeah, see you all soon.